Let's talk Cowboys and NFL, the end of the Cowboys season, with the Hall of Famer, former Cowboys quarterback Troy Aikman. It's brought to us by LaCour 43 and the original Kara Hero and BDO accountants and advisors. Morning, Troy. Good morning, guys. I don't know if you've been keeping up with this or not, but since you retired, the Cowboys haven't sniffed the Super Bowl, and the story continues <laughs> as we go to 26 years and they're a one-and-done in the postseason. We were just talking about every year it's disappointing if your team gets knocked out, but, boy, frustration really growing around here because uh, this looks a lot like a lot of other postseasons over the last 26 years. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean uh... – High expectations, and, um, you know, I talked about it last week that I thought that I thought the NFC was wide open. I thought the AFC was wide open. The two teams going into the postseason that I just didn't feel that you could make much of a case for were Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, but everybody else I thought had a pretty good chance. Uh, You can make an argument for why they could go all the way, and and yet I think from Dallas's uh, standpoint, to draw San Francisco. We didn't have a San Francisco game all season until week 18 when they played the Rams. And so got a chance to dive into them and, and was really impressed. And I, and I've been impressed with Kyle Shanahan for a long time. And I think if I were starting a team today uh, and I could pick any head coach I wanted, I think it would be Kyle Shanahan is who I would hire. Um, and so their team's just built, as I said, a lot like us. Uh, and it's different and unique from the way most teams are, are built in today's NFL. Uh, but it's a formula that's won a lot of football games over the history of the league. And so for Dallas to face them in the wild card game, I, I thought it would be a, a really tough ball game. I, I could see certainly Dallas winning that game, but I could see San Francisco winning. And the thing that you hate, which is what happened to Dallas, and it seems that it's happened – you know, more times than not, when you go through a regular season, you get into the postseason, you're positioned pretty well, you feel that you've got a good team, then you then you can't, you know, it's the playoffs. So you just don't want to look back and not play your best football. And that's what I've always loved about the postseason is that you can't make any excuses. Um, it is what it is, and you have to go out and play, and you have to play at a high level. And if you don't, you go home. Uh, whereas in the regular season, you can always come up with various reasons as to why you didn't get it done, why you didn't play so well, and always say, well, you know, we'll regroup and get better and we'll play next week. That's not the case in the postseason, and too many times Dallas just hasn't played their best football when they've gotten in. We saw this team play at a pretty high level the first half of the season against teams like Tampa Bay and the Chargers and the Patriots. Why couldn't they do that in the second half of the season against good teams and especially in this game against San Francisco? Well, it's a good question, and um, it's uh, it's a hard one to really figure out. I don't know that anybody necessarily has the answer to that. Uh, felt that, that Dallas was certainly getting healthy uh, around the right time and getting some key guys back and, and, and all that goes with that, but yeah, they just never really quite found their footing. And the the games where they played well in the second half of the season or the last month of the season were against teams that basically had their junior varsity on the field. They, you know, Washington was without a number of people. The Eagles didn't play anybody in the last game of the season. And I and I don't. But as we talked about, sometimes it doesn't necessarily matter who you play if you can gain some confidence going in. But the other teams, when people got real excited about them, uh, and you, you can only play who you play, but they just weren't very good football teams. And then when they played good teams, you know, they seemed to, to struggle a little bit. And, of course, they, they ran into a good team against San Francisco. But, you know, just too many mistakes. The penalties, uh, as we know in this game against San Francisco, uh, really impacted that game. And it did throughout the season. Uh, you just... It's just not winning football when you're when you're the most penalized team in football. It's a hard thing to overcome, and I think you've got to be so good uh, to to be able to win games when you are getting penalized like that. And uh, and that's not typically the case with most teams. Is rarely do you see a team that beats themselves that badly that's able to overcome it on a regular basis. Boy, to accent what you're saying about playoff football and running the football. Seems like anytime you bring up running the football, everyone's ready to move on to uh, yeah. But when are you going to throw it and run the touchdown play? But every postseason game last week 
with the exception of one, the team that won was the team that was able to run the ball. Um, even Bucks Eagles, and I almost throw that one out because it seemed like such a mismatch. Um, but especially the ones that got out of hand: Rams Cardinals, one forty to sixty-one; um, Kansas City, one hundred six to fifty-five over Pittsburgh in rushing yards, one seventy-four eighty-nine. Right. Bills over Patriots. As much as we've tried to change this game, it's it's still, especially this time of year, it's up front and and your ability to smash that thing. Well, I think it's uh, it's about imposing your will physically, and to do that, it's it's usually in the run game. I think teams that are able to run the football have a mindset and a physical style of play that permeates through the entire team. I, I've always felt that the offensive line is really the heartbeat of the entire team, and when you have a tough physical offensive line then usually you have a tough physical football team, and it carries over then to the defensive side of the ball. And I thought what was interesting last week, as we were getting ready for our game with Tampa Bay and Philadelphia, is in visiting with Bruce Arians, no one, no one threw the ball more than Tampa Bay in the regular season this year, and really under Bruce Arians over the last few years. Uh, last year, they ran the ball a lot more in the postseason, and Leonard Fournette had a had a great run, and they end up winning the Super Bowl. And in visiting with Bruce, you know, he said that in postseason football, just like last year, they wanted to run the ball more. He felt that you have to. Now they thought they were going to get Leonard Fournette back, so I'm not sure exactly what the numbers were, but but that was the approach, and that's the philosophy. And I do agree with what you just said. There 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 is a, a, a common commonality between those teams. And San Francisco, of course, is committed to doing that uh, as much as anybody. And I think a lot of it depends on who you're playing uh, and what the other offense is capable of doing. I don't think you go into every game with the same blueprint as to how you're going to win the game, uh, whether it's running the ball or, or, or throwing the football. And the great thing about Dallas with this group, for the most part, uh, maybe not quite as much this year. I know Zeke's been banged up. The offensive line hasn't been quite the same. But... You know, they've, they've had something that most teams don't have, and it's what we had, that if teams want to play coverage, then we could run the ball, and if they didn't, then we could throw the ball. You know, everybody talks about how, how, how well we ran the ball. The, the, the years that we won Super Bowls, you can go back and look. We, we were top five. One year I know we were top one. We were the top team in the league when we won the Super Bowl. That Our yards per pass, we were number one. So maybe we didn't throw it as much as San Francisco and Green Bay, but when we did throw it, we were really effective. We threw it better than anybody when we did throw it. We just yeah. didn't throw it as many times. So we had the best of both worlds, and Dallas has had that. But I do think that, that I heard you a moment ago saying, hey, what's the identity of the Cowboys? And I think it's a good question because – I, I'm not sure myself uh, as someone who's watched them. And I say that because they did under Jason Garrett, they built the offensive line. That was really important to him and wanted to have a blueprint similar to what won us Super Bowls back in the 90s. And so they invested in the offensive line. Those players hit with Zach Martin and Tyron Smith and um, Travis Frederick and you know, so forth, and they've still they've still invested in the offensive line, but I, I don't know that they're built a, a, around the strong running game that they were. Um, you know, last week in the game against San Francisco, I think what was, and it happened in our game uh, with Philadelphia, and I commented on it. If y'all watched the game, was it City Lamb? What did he have? One catch in the game? Yep. Is that, yeah. Is that right? So I, I watched that game because I'm getting ready for San Francisco this week. So I've studied the tape. And I was watching it really more from San Francisco's defensive perspective, but I also was keeping an eye on what Dallas was doing offensively. And, yeah, they, San Francisco rushed four guys for the most part. They blitzed occasionally, but they're a four-man rush football team. But a lot of times when you say that, then you think, oh, well, they're playing coverage. Well, they, didn't, they mixed in some coverage, but there was a lot of single coverage on C.D. Lamb. And I would tell you, as I said in our game last week at halftime, when they couldn't get the ball to Devontae Smith, when the Eagles couldn't. If, if, if it was back when I was playing, and I hate going back to that point because nobody cares, but what I see around the leagues, not just Dallas, it was in Philadelphia, I've seen it with a lot of teams, that a lot of these offenses, they want to scheme things. The, the coordinators just, it's all about scheme. Rather than this corner is playing soft, he's scared to death, just run the route tree. Just run a comeback, run a run a dig route, run a curl, run anything, and you're going to complete the pass 
whenever you want. And Irvin would have had 10 catches at halftime if they had played us the way that they played C.D. Lamb in that game. So I just don't quite understand that. It's interesting. I was at Madden's uh, memorial service yesterday in, in Oakland, and uh, Peyton Manning was there. And we got to talking about the game, and I was having this conversation with him. And, and, and he agreed that, you know, more and more you just see that teams – the game's not that difficult. If, if I've got a great player at wide receiver and a corner is playing him single coverage, throw him the ball. Yeah. You know, he's going to win most of the time. And that's what they do in Green Bay with Devontae Adams. But for some reason, a lot of other teams, including Dallas in that game – uh, on Sunday, and I'm sure that I'm sure that the coaches go back and look at that and say, "Man, why didn't we do that?" They tried it. They did a couple times. They hit the one catch he had, and then they they had another one where the the DB played it pretty well. But for the most part, they just didn't take advantage of some of the the looks that I think they had and they could have. It's our weekly visit with the Hall of Famer Troy Aikman here on the Ticket. Almost every broadcaster or columnist beat writer this week has described the Cowboys in that game as looking unprepared and undisciplined. Is that more on the players or more on the coaches? And what grade do you give Mike McCarthy for this season? Oh man, I think uh, I think it's both. I, I think it's I think it's you know the head coaches obviously uh, that, that's where it, that's where the buck stops, so to speak. That you know the coach is held accountable for everything, but I think the players also. Uh, are responsible for that as well. Those are those are difficult conversations um, because in, unless you're in the building, you don't know exactly what's tolerated um, and and what's allowed. I, I know that for me, and I'm not. I know the the player is a little bit different. I think uh, the amount of practice time, um, what you can do with players now, and that's why I do think that the collective bargaining agreement as the owners got more and more of the percentage of the revenue sharing with the players, the players, then their rebuttal was, okay, we want less practice time. And I've, I, so, you, so you work less, you get paid more. I, I don't quite understand that because at some point I think as players, you, you've got to make the argument that I want to be great. And if you want to be great, you got to work at it mm-hmm. and teams have to be together. So I don't, I, I don't, I don't like that part of it. But I do know that the players are coached differently uh, than they were. Um, I thought it was funny going back to our game against Philadelphia with Tampa Bay. Here, Bruce Arians is out there. He goes Woody Hayes on on you know, <laughs> yeah. Andrew Adams, and I thought, wow, you, you know, there's not many coaches in the league today that could get away with that um, <clears throat> within a locker room. So <clears throat> things are much different than 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 they once were. I think as far as uh, grading Mike, I think I think most people would probably say you know that's a C, just because you come into the season and the, it's really what you're going to do in the postseason. I mean, fairly or unfairly, uh, and I think it's I think it's fair, you know, that the expectations are certainly high for the team, and they should be. It's a talented team. But sometimes maybe they're a little higher than they should be. And I think part of that is just that Jerry, at his core, is a salesman. He's an optimist. Um, So he's always talking about Super Bowls. And we all understand that, excuse me, this is Dallas. And that is the goal. And that, excuse me, and that's the objective every year. But it's a long year to get back to January again, you know. And so if you get into the postseason and you don't win a game it doesn't for this organization and this is a good thing it doesn't really matter what you do in the regular season I mean it's hard to look at any regular season and say yeah well we were you know 13 and 4 or 12 and 5 or 17 and 0 or whatever it is if you don't do anything in the postseason then you're really at the end of the day no different than the Jacksonville Jaguars or the New York Jets that didn't get in. And I think losing a play, and, and, and that I'm not trying to suggest that every team that doesn't win the Super Bowl may as well have not played the year. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that because I know in 91, when we made it to the postseason, finally, after not having been in the postseason for so long, that was a big accomplishment. And we were able to win a playoff game. But then we hit a period to where 
hey, if you don't win the Super Bowl, it's, it's a disappointment. In 1994, when we lost to San Francisco in the championship game, that was a disappointing year. There was no, no part of any of us that walked away from that season saying, yeah, this was a really successful season. So I think that, that fairly or unfairly, like I say, this is a team, I don't know, they've won three or four playoff games since 96. I mean, it's, it, there's, not, there's not a track record in the postseason, but yet it's a team that's expected to be in the Super Bowl each season. Um, and so when you don't win a playoff game, I, I don't know how you can look at it really any differently. And I, I don't know how much interaction you have with Jerry. I know it bothers him because he wants to win. There is no doubt yeah. about it. And I, and I think he's made some changes over the years, maybe given a little more power to his son. And Will McClay, I think, has a big role yeah. in this organization. But I, I don't know. Like, um, What do you think his night was like Sunday night? Well, not good. Um, not good. I, I, there's no question that that Jerry wants. To, he desperately wants to win a Super Bowl, and I, you know, I get a chance to see all the teams, and this Cowboys team is really talented. I mean, really talented. And and I know that you can poke holes in certain things, but when you look at them stacked up against the other teams in the field. You know, they, they talent-wise, can play with anybody. And really, as far as their abilities and what we've seen from them at various times this year, yeah, we know when they're playing their best, they can beat anybody in the league. Um, but it, it, this has been hard for him. And, and I, uh, this is a team, I heard you guys earlier, that it's, a, it's, a, it's an organization that it's hard, I think, in order for them to keep an edge. Um, it, and, and I think that's important uh, because the facility that they practice at is amazing. Um, it's the nicest in the NFL. There's tours that come through constantly. I mean, you're constantly reminded that you're a Dallas Cowboy and you're really popular. Um, and you lead every sports cast at the top of the show. They're talking about the Cowboys, whether the team's good or not good whether it's ESPN or NFL Network or all those Sunday morning shows, there is a segment every week, usually at the top, that talks about the Cowboys. Um, and so they know that it's America's team. Uh, the players are the most popular. Uh, they're selling the most jerseys for the most part because of all the attention that they get. So trying to trying to pull that in and then give a team an edge and say, hey, you know, we are the underdogs and here's what you know that's 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 not that's not an easy task um so i think that's the challenge that's the challenge for for mike mccarthy and uh it's a challenge for the players to try to keep that um you know i i know that when when i was playing with jimmy jimmy uh <laughs> i don't know that i don't know that we ever felt like we accomplished anything <laughs> to be quite honest i mean he was the more we won the tougher he got and uh there's something to be said for that. You guys had an asthma field and everything. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And then later, hey, what's funny about that is, yeah, the asthma field. And now, now Jimmy, you know, Jimmy has asthma. <laughs> does he? <laughs> yeah, he does. You know, when he got when he got told he was going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you know, he almost stopped breathing because of his asthma. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. right. You know, he got so emotional about it, but yeah. You know, I, I couldn't laugh about it then, but I laugh at him now. He's had an inhaler, and I say, you know what, the, you know, they got that asthma feel. <laughs> yeah, at least he knows where it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> well, I see the uh, forecast calls for possible snow and single-digit uh, temperatures on uh, Saturday night in Green Bay. Ought to be an uh, awesome setting for what should be a really interesting game between the Packers and 49ers. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, these two teams, we've done some of these postseason games. It's it's always pretty memorable, and I, I, it is interesting, though. Uh, you know, at a time we talk about what's best for the players that they're playing uh, primetime night games in Buffalo and in Green Bay, <laughs> right? So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Got the fans, come on. <laughs> well, have a great weekend. Tell Joe we said hi. Have a good call on Saturday night. I'll do it. All right, fellas. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. That's the great Troy you. Aikman, 49ers in Green Bay.